Mm. Easy does it. Mm. Almost there. Thank you very much. Very kind. certain conditions, this danger will always be present, particularly intense. Why? Why would that be? And that's what's there, why cause of film cannot always be avoided, even when never really can. Ladies and gentlemen, the captain has turned on the fastened seatbelt sign. We are now crossing a zone of turbulence. Please, return to your seats. you're very much in a tin can being thrown from one place to the other, just floating in the sky. No rhyme or reason or science. I wonder if you get used to it. Anyway, are you sure you're okay? I can get you something from the trolley. Okay, well, let me know the second that changes.
They're very well put together. These new Pan Am lounges. Have you been in one before? Very spacious, as you can see. It's lovely being able to sit opposite your lovely self. And they're almost whisper, quiet. Very nice. Cost a pretty penny, as you know. Not going to lie. Did you try the ham? You must have been asleep. They brought through the most wonderful glazed, honey glazed, roasted gammon joint before with all of the trimmings. It was covered in little cloves and pineapple and it just looked absolutely magnificent. But I would happily spend Christmas on this flight were it not for the uh, real existential dread. <laughs> well, that and I uh, quite like Christmas at my own. Look forward to it every year. Never loses its magic. Well, apart from uh, everyone having to put up with my cooking. I wonder if the air staff here are employable. <laughs> Yes, hello. Hi. No, 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 no. I don't smoke. Do you? We don't smoke. I dare say one doesn't need to after one must be. I don't. I can't figure out what the time is. It must be 12 or so hours in the air. It gets rather ripe in here, wouldn't you say? No, so thank you very much. Sorry, just before you go. Can I please ask your name? <laughs> your parents had a wonderful taste. My name is James. Pleased to meet you. Not Jibbo, not Jimmy, not Jim Bob, but James. Or Jamesy Wimsy. Yes, no thank you. Just before you go, would you like a magazine or anything? No, I think we're fine. Thank you. You can read one of mine if you like. Sorry. What is your name? We haven't yet been acquainted. Well. Pleasure. We have here Photo Magazine. I have a few editions if you like one. Let me show you some of the pictures. We have beautiful color photography, as well as some absolutely stunning black and white photography. Look at this one here. Look at how glamorous she is. It looks to me like she is shot with one very hard, very bright Fresnel bulb very far away. Her face is angled up. You can see that the bright Fresnel bulb is just obliterating all of her imperfections. Gorgeous. I think the trend these days is to see more natural lighting. You know, very much as if they've been lit by something soft and big. Much like this guy on a cloudy day. That's the trend, but can you beat that look? Oh, I very much hope it never dies. <laughs> this heading reads, I am sick of available light photography. And I entirely agree. <laughs> yes, I uh, guess you would consider me a man of the camera. Yes. An amateur, though. I wouldn't say I'm a professional. Here we go. And interesting articles, like I'm sure this one will be. Is photography still popular? Let me wager a guess. I would say yes. 
But, hey, let's see what Pierre Frank Gunter has to say on the subject. <clears throat> In a broadcast lecture on present cultural trends, a marginal remark was passed, which is valid to a greater extent than can be assessed at the moment for, well, let us say, the art as well as the technological aspect of photography. It was claimed that art and science were losing more and more of their previous popularity. Absolute tosh. <clears throat> we need not think of Picasso, our man Picasso, as the most topical and controversial example of our times in order to see the truth of this statement without reservation. <clears throat> we may passionately reject Picasso. We may take up any position to the man and his work. He remains in the most powerful spotlight of general interest and demands insistently and uncompromisingly, if not at least a declaration of our indifference, at any rate, our taking up a position of some kind. Well, let me state in a position of some kind that I'm very happy to take up a position of what what do they say indifference i don't care i don't i don't particularly think that anyone is losing their interest in photography or art or science although i will say that picasso is perhaps a little abstract for my taste there was something about cubism that just didn't ring true for me but what was his early cubist painting? There's Demoiselle d'Avignon. That was beautiful. No, I did rather enjoy that. And, of course, Expressionism has given birth to abstract Expressionism, this fantastic art movement that I've just been to see a wonderful exhibition on in uh, the very uh, new, newly minted Guggenheim Museum in New York. I was there to see an artist called Jackson have you heard of him? Yes, well, I'm not sure if he's entirely to my tastes, but the concept of uh, action painting, you know, his preferred style, is very much about capturing the artist at work, the artistic process. Meta, in a sense, but an enjoyable concept. Since we're new compatriots, let me let you in on a little secret. I don't actually like fine art. Which may seem a little surprising given I'm a man of the camera and maybe I are better phrase would be, I don't like fine art as much as I think I ought to. Maybe uh, the expectations set by my father and his father, the pressure of conforming, has led to me needing to acquire a certain taste that, for me, isn't so easily acquired. Some things you just age into, but at this point, who knows if I want to. There's a lot to be said for being oneself. However, it's interesting to analyze what one's true self is. Are there things that you pretend to like that you don't really know if you do? Are you hoping to eventually acquire these tests? Do you think that your true self is the things that you want, your aspirations, or the things that you feel that you are? <clears throat> Maybe have we stopped trying so hard to be other people, our forebears, the people we respect and look up to? Then we'd be better at being ourselves. 
I'm sure I can't offer you a magazine. I have plenty. <laughs> okay, so long as you're happy just to listen to me ramble on. This is my baby, by the way. Isn't she an absolute work of art? Although not quite a Pollock or a Picasso. This is a Minolta SLR camera, which I rather like because it looks somewhat like a Leica, a much more expensive Leica, but was made in Japan. They know how to make a camera, the Japanese. It's beautiful. It's got a lovely polarizing filter on the front, as well as all the usual what's it's and do that's. It's got here the means to open up the back, which I will not do because it has film. This very satisfying little clicky noise. And your shutter speed, your aperture, your viewfinder, the ability to focus. All good things that a camera should do. No, no, don't worry. That's a too odd a question. I won't ask it. I wouldn't want to impose. I'm already taking up far too much of your time. Well, uh, I wonder if maybe you might want to take a photo with me. Yes, to, let's say, mark the occasion and uh, in the hopes that we make it out of here alive, out of this floating tin can. Let's call it a, a survival story. <laughs> a couple of war heroes. See, this thing here is a self-timer. I just pull it back, that lovely clicking noise. Then it should count down to when we can take a photo. I rather think that the self-timer has somewhat changed photography. It means that the photographer can suddenly be in the picture. I have almost no photos of my grandfather because he was always pointing this at other people rather than himself. I wonder if he looked like me. Shall we? So that's a fun noise. Let's hope that worked. And thank you very much. Very kind of you, compatriot. Flight attendants, cabin crew, please be seated. Snowflake, my father would call me. A bit sensitive. <laughs> hmm. Oh. Well. Oh, this. Yes, no, I uh, appear to have just spilled a bit of food on myself. I do apologize, it's uh, something even I'm unsightly mess, but, um, <sighs> there we are. What did you think of New York? Have you been there before? Hmm. New York, New York, 
ethnicity is so nice. They named it twice. It's a beautiful place. I love it. I have something of an adult infatuation with it. In fact, yes, it has an energy to it. A hum. A real character to the city. The city feels alive, don't you think? It's a beautiful, beautiful place. I go there as often as I can and visit Broadway. We have the West End in London, which is beautiful and by all accounts just as thriving an industry. But there's something about Broadway. Just the magic. Perhaps it's because all the theatres are packed so densely that the atmosphere is just so palpable, so rich. Do you know what I mean? Of course you do. Yes, no, I was there to see a new production called West Side Story. Have you heard of it? Yes, based off Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet, which I'm sure you know. Incredible dancing and movement. The whole thing felt kinetic and alive in the music. It's like musical music I've never heard. Tonight, tonight, it all began tonight. I saw you and the world went away. I saw it twice. Today, today, dun 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 dun. Oh. It is, of course, a, a tragedy, but like so many tragedies, it is so beautiful because of how fleeting their love is and how fiery and passionate it all is. And of course, they're unraveled by that one thing, that unique character flaw, I guess you would call it. In Greek tragedy, that would be called Harmatia or Harmatia, however choose to pronounce it, which is effectively, uh, effectively means to err, to error, to do wrong. And it very much points to a tragic hero's means of undoing, their one true character flaw that unravels them. Sometimes it drives them mad. In many cases, it is their doom their death. It's interesting how fiction can reduce tragic heroes to that one fatal flaw and base their arc around that. I guess me to you, a stranger, my one would be that I'm terrified of flying. <laughs> and I guess my story with you over the next however long the rest of this flight is would be me overcoming that fear only then to perish through an inferno of fire as this plane plummeted to the ground let's hope that doesn't happen for both of our sakes what would you say your character flaw is? I accept it's quite a personal question. No, too right. What an absurd question. <laughs> Do you like musicals? Yes. No, I'm not entirely sure myself, just for me, uh, that musicals translate too well to the silver screen. You know, I liked An American in Paris, I will say that. American in Paris was very well done, but A Star is Born. No, please lock that away. Never want to see that one again. Please stay buried. Flight attendant, prepare for landing, please. Surely it's time for a tiny whiskey. Although just a tiny one, I can't get too tiddly. 
I'm seeing my boy Flynn for Christmas. Which reminds me. I hope to write to you from the plane. I do beg your pardon. I'll be with you in a second. My dearest, although distant, Flynn. Ladies and gentlemen, as we start our descent, please make sure all carry-on luggage is stowed in the overhead storage bins. Thank you. Cabin crew, please take your seats for landing. They've never felt particularly compelled to wrap up their stories in a nice bow, in a nice flower-scented box. No, they don't sugarcoat it. Life isn't. side compatriot.